Good afternoon, everyone. It's Brad at the Yamaha Marine Center here in Wells Road in Orange Park, right off I-295, right next to BMW Ducati at Jacksonville. Uh, today, we're going to be going over one of my favorite boats, actually. And I say it's one of my favorite boats, but a lot of them are my favorite boats. This one's just my favorite in the Offshore Express lineup. Why is it my favorite? because it's one of the most contemporary looking boats out there. Uh, not many manufacturers have stayed on the forefront of redesigning this style of boat. Uh, I don't know why, because they fish really well, they cruise really well, and it'll actually weekend really well. But this is a 2019 Pursuit Offshore 325. Uh, they call it a 325 because they have a transom bracket now, or they have for several years. This is just a 2019 version of it, where the brackets extend out kind of past the engines give you a nice swim platform and everything so length overall is actually 34 feet 6 inches beam on this boat is 10 feet 10 inches and that is uh, pretty much all the way down the boat so it maintains the width <clears throat> pretty far uh, 12,430 pounds dry with the twin 300s they are Yamaha factory white paint which is pretty cool uh, diesel generator on this boat so you can run most of the systems all at the same time uh, limited power sharing we'll go over that when we go on the AC panel inside uh, 16 gallons of diesel uh, we have a 30 gallon fresh water tank and uh, 18 gallon holding tank and we also have a live well fish boxes all kinds of fishability built into this boat so we'll get that uh, one of the newest additions to this boat is these uh, real whole side windows so it's not just an insert you can actually see the cushions inside the uh, cabin there it provides a lot of natural light um, she is doesn't have quite a bit of uh, doesn't have as much flare as you might expect she's pretty round up front which does lead to it being a little bit more wet if you get into a, uh, a beam wind or a quartering wind or something like that but at least you have the full windshield that you'll see once we get inside the boat to protect you from that with windshield wipers and all that good stuff uh, nice steep entry on the boat to cut through the waves. Lifting strikes aren't quite as aggressive on, on a boat of this size, uh, you know, in my opinion, but it, it gets out of the water really nice with those twin 300s. And uh, you do have a, a really aggressive reverse chine there to help deflect that water. Um, one of the coolest features that Pursuit's been working on with Lumar, if you can call an anchor, cool. Um, this can actually retract up into the anchor pocket a little bit more than it is now uh, to really follow the sheer line of the boat. That uh, way it doesn't uh, stick out like a sore thumb, like some of our competition does. Uh, but moving our way down the whole side, you can see it does stay almost that full 10-10 beam all the way down. It doesn't curve in too much, so it gives you, uh, geez, a one, one feet nine inch draft with engines up or something like that. So for a, a fairly large, heavy boat, uh, it can get through some pretty skinny water. Um, you see the other whole side window for natural light inside there. Some port lights up there that are, you can't open to get some fresh air. Uh, nice integrated fiberglass windshield that integrates all the way up into the hard top for that weather protection. And then what isn't protected by glass or fiberglass, you have that uh, nice Ising glass, or I think this is strata glass and uh, sunbrella fabric. Uh, this boat we did in a white hull side with a navy boot stripe and navy storage cover. Again, uh, transom extensions back here. Yamaha factory paint 300s, nice white metal flake. Quattro, jeez, uh, ocean LEDs, I believe, is what these lights are. Underwater lights. Uh, they're the full color, red, green, blue, RGB, W, white. Back there, um, again, platforms. Integrated swim ladder tucked in here that I can't really take out very well because ladders, our stairs are in the way. But six step on this one. Tucks in really nice. It's actually pretty easy to deploy even when you're on the boat. And you can see that these transom extensions, if you ever did foul a prop or had any kind of engine issues, you can actually trim the engine out of the water and get to the lower units. So they function as uh, swim platforms, use it to land fish. Uh, you can actually get from one side to the other. Uh, you can see this boat also comes with a 30 amp short power cord, uh, dockside water, all kinds of hookups for you, Linko, electric trim tabs into the boat on the uh, platforms here and then coming into the boat you get a magnetic catch over here you have a freshwater shower 
with your fire extinguisher, some tool storage here, uh, raw water down there on the bottom, cup holders, uh, a few rod holders scattered about, nice big pop-up cleats, you know, running big half-inch lines or something if you want to. Uh, and then coming over here, little storage box on starboard side, and then you have a nice big live well on port side here, which is insulated too, so you can use it as a cooler if you're not going to be using it for bait or anything like that. Um, they try to make the most of the space here. This does drain overboard. It's not insulated. Uh, some people do use it for drink storage, but your batteries are all under here, except your electronics battery and your bow thruster battery are up front, but your main cutoff to the boat is in here. And then of course your isolation transformers here too. Uh, Pursuit comes from building uh, big boats. They used to be owned by S2 yachts. So a lot of big boat technology built into these, like this isolation transformer. Not many people are using that. Basically what it does is if you're at a marina and the shore power isn't clean, uh, the boat, the power never reaches the boat. It goes to the isolation transformer. It kind of works like a wireless charger for your phone, where you can just lay your phone on a uh, pad and it uh, it starts charging without actually being plugged in. So same idea on, on this guy. Uh, cockpit entry lights, you can turn on and off back here, which is the white lights on the floor all the way around. You can also turn them on and off in the helm. Uh, cool little entertainment center back here with an AC grill that's run off of the generator and then a freshwater sink. And then they actually give you a 110 outlet here so you can run a blender or something up there if you wanted to. Your grill controls, five gallon bucket, a little storage compartment, more lights around the boat. Nice step on either side to get on and off or around uh, the walkway to get to the front of the boat. Uh, some other cool features is the cockpit drains. Nice big drains all uh, put under a nice stainless uh, pursuit emblazoned great uh, seating back here it's pretty phenomenal uh, this port side seat is an option so you can get it without that if you wanted some more tool storage on that side and then, of course the transom seat pulls out in the same way with the backrest that pops up um, and then when you get out there and want to do some fishing they stow out of the way pretty quickly and you can use them as tow holds as well macerated insulated fish boxes one on either side do a pretty good job. Uh, put some pretty big fish in there. Notice how easy it is to get to the mechanical access as well. I did that with one hand. Some of our competition, you have to open five or six different latches and, and use three hands to pull it up. Uh, another thing they do well is hide all the uh, unsightly pie plates and stuff like that uh, as much out of the way as possible. And nice clean bilge. Water management is actually underneath this faux deck here. That's a bilge pump underneath there. There's no one aft behind the Fisher Pan generator, which you can see right there. That generator is extremely quiet. You can actually hear the fuel pump more than you can hear the generator. You can see the Fireboy system in there. Uh, hydraulic power assist steering. All of your pumps, filters, and everything are mounted up underneath that shelf so they stay away from as much water as possible. They're mounted vertically whenever possible so if they do get wet they shed water faster and tend uh re reduces corrosion and rusting and stuff like that so like i said it's an engineered product very well thought out and then this aft facing seat is actually a cooler there's an optional chill plate that you can put in there that gets cold enough to freeze stuff if it's close enough to it and then coming into the bridge deck there's some nice teak steps so you don't go tripping it used to have those and that would happen at boat shows and whatnot. Uh, you can see some tackle storage on this side, uh, lure tubes, tackle boxes. Uh, this entire drawer comes out pretty easily. You can see those quick release latches there to get behind there to some uh, systems if you need to. And then your DC panel has everything you need right here. I would fire everything up and turn the lights and stuff on, but somebody left the battery switch on and we are dead now. Uh, coming into the bridge deck, nice wraparound lounge seating. So you'll be facing forward, aft, uh, facing the helm chair. You know, plenty of seating options up here to, to entertain. There's also a nice drop curtain that fully encloses the bridge deck. Uh, so there's a separate AC unit. You can see it pumps out here, one on the helm, and there's another one right down there. 
so you can actually keep the whole bridge deck area enclosed in uh, about I don't know eight to ten maybe 12 degrees cooler than ambient a lot of windows letting uh, that radiant sun heat come in here but uh, overall it stays quite a bit cooler than, than if you were just hanging out outside and again it's a separate AC unit um, nice big windshield vent and if you ever have a chance to visit one of these boats in person it's really neat the way they do this windshield uh, it's a uh, chemically treated windshield so they don't temper it with heat so it's optically correct if you're wearing polarized lenses uh, when you see through it, you don't see any kind of rainbows or streaking from where those uh, jets hit it to cool it off uh, to temper the glass. So it's uh, it's a very expensive process, and I think the windshields are actually flown in from Italy, if I'm uh, correct. But very expensive, but it, it kind of pays off as far as visibility goes. So you can see there's not much obstruction. Um, even, you know, that bow rail, once you're up and running, the horizon is usually just between the bow and the bow rail so the line of sight on this boat is phenomenal um the factory installed electronics new uh, actually these are the 7612s and we have the yamaha cl7 so that's the latest updated gauge uh digital throttles lenco electric trim tabs bow thruster is standard on everything 32 feet and above uh, the JL Audio Media Master 100. All of your DC systems there. Got a nice glove box up here as well. Speakers everywhere. Really cool boat for entertaining, cruising, and uh, like I said, it fishes really well too. A Garmin VHF 300, so this boat is definitely rigged and ready to go. Uh, coming down into the boat, what I noticed first is the, the wood treatments in here, which is all real wood and real wood veneers. So there's no uh, laminates or anything like that. It's all, uh, I believe it's a sapili. It's an African mahogany. And same thing with the table. Uh, this table is electrically actuated. Again, I would show you, but batteries are dead. So electric table up and down, all kinds of light options. Uh, and then you have to manually scissor the berth in and uh, it turns into a nice size sleeper in here. Um, little TV, separate AC unit. And then all of your alternating current stuff is back here with your ammeter and then all your switches. So it takes the guesswork out of power sharing. If you're running on your generator, you know what systems you can run. You can run your cockpit air, your cockpit grill, and then your cabin air, uh, cooling pump and all this stuff. And if you want to run your stove and water heater, then you have to make a choice between the cockpit grill and the cockpit air. So pretty logical choices. Uh, your Fisher Panda panel there, start, stop, all that good stuff. And then your two AC units are separate there. All in a nice panel. Uh, galley, really good size galley for a boat this size. Uh, single burner, full size microwave, uh, decent size fridge in here, little freezer area, and then plenty of storage in these buckets, drain plug. Nice size sink. And of course down into the midship there. It's a pretty decent midship berth. The only thing I ever hear complaints about because of the beam of the boat is the entryway to the midship is kind of narrow. I'd probably call it about 18, maybe 20 inches. So somebody my size again can get through here pretty good, but anyone larger than me or a child may have a little bit of difficulty. But you have some pumps and things underneath the bed. Pretty easy to get to. Little hatch there. Uh, being an engineered boat, yeah, they put a lot of thought into things you may need to get to to service. Um, rod holders, you know, just in case you're going fishing, need somewhere to store them. So whether you're weekending, fishing, cruising, day boating, this uh, has pretty much everything you would want to do. Nice wet head compartment, cover that goes over the toilet. Uh, the shower comes out of the sink here. So again, enough to enough to get things done. Maybe not spend a week on the boat, but weekending is definitely possible here. But if you're uh, interested in any more information on this or any other boat we carry at Yamaha Marine Center, free, feel free to call Brad or Barton at 904-644-7631. Or you can always visit us on the website at yamahamarinejax.com.